So Motherland Fort Salem episode four taught me something very important today. The strength of the female military revolves around choreography of dance and orgies. Hi guys, my name is Maria Park and this is Approach to Nerd. And in this episode, we are reviewing Motherland Fort Salem episode four entitled Hell Beltane. And yeah, <laughs> this episode was very good. Um, I am a little frustrated with the whole um, Rael Scylla thing right now only because, um, so the actress they have to, that plays Scylla, she has a way of making you feel sorry for her even when she does like the most horrible crap. <laughs> you know, it's like you find yourself trying to, to find like the good in her and redeem her even though at the end of the day, she is still hurting people and murdering people. So I'm kind of like, <laughs> I'm facing a dilemma here. Um, this episode basically was split, in my opinion, into two major parts. That is the Beltane festivities and then Rael dealing with um, not being able to save Porter and trying to figure out what's going on with Scylla. Because for some reason, when Rael tried to heal um, Porter and save his life, she ended up getting his memories, basically his last moments before he died. Which is interesting because um, in the episode, um, General Alder basically decides that she wants to see you know, Porter's last memory or have Porter's last memories um, viewed by, I forgot the woman's name, but she's a, a necro. So I guess she's like over the necro. To me, she, she's almost like um, a coroner, <laughs> like the head coroner of the necros. Um, and so she's going to basically um, talk to Porter and see his last moments to see if the spree had anything to do with it. Um, Abigail's mother, Petra, just shows up right before, you know, I guess the Bel Beltane finale um, to suggest to General Alder that they should no longer do the Beltane because, hey, we've gotten like reports that there's residue on mirrors. So we think the spree is infiltrating the base. And if, that, if that's, you know, true and they're at the base, school, whatever, then, you know, we need to make sure all of our people are safe and just postpone the festivities. And General Alder's like, but no. We can't do that because even our enemy witches know how important Beltane is, so they wouldn't dare attack us on that day. And that just got me thinking. I already have sneaking suspicions that Alder was the one that started the spree and that, you know, Anacostia is in on it. The way they looked at each other during that meeting with Petra, um, Abigail's mother, just re it reconfirms to me that they are in control of the spree. Because of course, Alder's not gonna say, hey, you know, this big you know, custom event we have, you know, that celebrates our, you know, womanhood our, and lets us, you know, basically be free, you know, with our sexuality and then basically empowers us to be stronger, which I'm, that's what I'm thinking is happening. The power of dance and the power of sex are like, boosters, like almost like uppers <laughs> for the units, um, that possibly cannot be canceled because the spree know how important and everybody knows how important Beltane is. My theory is, is that Alder knows <laughs> that they're not going to attack because she told them they better not because Alder was getting some too. <laughs> I'm just saying her and the witch father were getting it on during Beltane. So so, of course, if you know that you've got a date to get some and you probably don't get some the rest of the year, yeah, they're not going to attack you because you're the leader. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, it, it was very interesting. Scylla is not working alone. We actually see at the end of this episode um, that there's another person that has a lighter that can change their face or identity like um, Scylla's been doing and was basically pretending to be Rael. And when, you know, Scylla starts making out with who she thinks is Rael, um, it turns out to be an older woman. I cannot, like I've skimmed the episode. I'm, I'm sometimes good at finding Easter eggs. I can't place this woman. I don't know if we've seen her in an earlier episode, if she's just somebody that's just a random, you know, maybe a random teacher, maybe a necro, maybe a medic, and we just, maybe she's been in the background. I don't know if we've seen this older woman, but this older woman is definitely Spree. And she says, your job was to get her closer to us, not you, basically. And she's like choking Scylla out. 
And it just it just opens up so many questions. Like, why do they want Rael so badly? I mean, if you think about it, Abigail is like military royalty. She's from a long line of bell. You know, the bellwethers are just very famous, very very famous in the military. Back to the the very first slave who was, you know, I guess one of Alder's very good soldiers, generals, whatever. Why not go after Abigail unless you're getting close to Rael to get to Abigail? Because there is an episode coming up next week where they're going to her family's wedding and it looks like a lot of stuff goes down. There's like blood all over Abigail's face. Looks like some stuff hits the fan next week. But I just really want, it's just really interesting that of all the, all the, um, the candidates or units that they want Rael, the one person that's trying not to be there, the one person that, you know, to me, yeah, she's a very talented, you know, um, fixer, but like, why do you want Rael so bad? I mean, even Tally, Tally has shown like she's almost a prodigy, you know, seer. So like, I don't get it. Or nowhere, I guess is what they call them. I don't get that. Why are they specifically going after Rael unless Rael's mother's not really dead and, her, and Rael's mother's in the spree? And maybe there's a lot more about the spree we don't know. They've done some horrible stuff. They've done mass murders, <laughs> but maybe there's another section to that. Maybe there's another group all together that's not the spree that's in the middle somewhere and that's what they belong to. I don't know. What I do know is <laughs> something is going on. And the whole like, um, so like Petra and Anacostia and then we're just going around to, you know, during Beltane to mirrors because, you know, Petra was under the suspicion that that's how the spree are communicating with each other. So when they go to Scylla's room, you know, Petra is like blowing on the mirror and, you know, when she turns away, you see a glimpse of the balloon. But I'm like, if somebody was helping Scylla, <laughs> you know, they're not going to let her get caught. So I don't know why they did not figure that out, but it's just, it's just so much. It's so many questions that I have. Like... Okay, so Scylla, of course, when they're going through the whole, let's talk to Porter, see his last words, she can't get into the room to stop them because apparently you have to be on ice all day for them to do this and they put like a bird in your mouth, bird flies in your mouth and then, you know, like in the window of time, you're able to like talk or communicate and um, Scylla couldn't get in the room so she upped the temperature. But my problem with that is, I cook a lot. <laughs> so, you know, I know that um, when you thaw something out, it's not instantaneous. If it was, then my, my you know, cooking adventures would not take as long. <laughs> so like, what did she think she was gonna accomplish by having 10 seconds of heat? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> but whatever, but somebody helped her. She wasn't even expecting it. So of course, somebody's gonna help her with the mirror. And Anacostia was the only other person, I think, I don't think there was a third person that was checking the mirrors and she could have been chanting an incantation or doing one of their seeds or whatever to conceal what was in the mirror. So where we see her looking at a mirror and it looks like she's checking the mirror, she may actually have been really aware that it's Scylla's mirror and she is doing something to stop Petra from seeing it. That's what I think because I am so certain that Alder is the original founder of the Spree. Because without the Spree, they are not relevant anymore. There's no need to have her in power. And one thing that we do know is that Alder needs to stay in power. So yeah, there's that. So let's talk about the Beltane. The Beltane is basically a giant dancing orgy. That is what it is. I'm sorry. I don't know how. I know this world is very like free and accepting and you know, sex isn't like taboo. So I get that. That's great. But like even to the dance, you know, like how did all of them have this wonderfully choreographed dance? Like does, does every witch in this world know this dance from like the child's age? You know, the mating circle dance or whatever. It's like the, it was completely choreographed. I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, which cause you know, Rael even made a comment. I hope we don't have to like, you know, chant to the goddess, whatever, and, and dance around poles with ribbons. It's like, she didn't know what it was about, but yet everybody knew how to do this dance. It's really strange. Like, is that what the, um, the lady who we met last week, Anacostia's friend, um, is that what she meant by, you know, you're, you'll just know or your body will know, whatever? Does everyone just have this dance choreographed in their brain that they've never practiced or rehearsed together? I'm just curious. And like, everybody's just doing it out in the open. Like, Tally lost her virginity against a tree. I mean, that doesn't seem very pleasant, but, you know, especially with tree bark. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but I guess I just, those are the questions that I have. Like, Beltane is like this big 
I guess, recharging orgy with dancing. Um, and of course, Raelle's not into guys, which she's confirmed. She actually is straight up says, I am not, she, she's a lesbian. I wasn't sure if she was bisexual or pansexual or any other ones like, you know, in our LGBT community. Um, but she straight up says, I am not into guys. And the guy that she meets that's Porter's friend says, well, I'm not into girls. So they kind of hit it off and then they have like a really cool conversation. But at the same time, he confirms that Porter was not suicidal. You know, I, you know, that's not something that I thought he would do it's completely out of character which also has Rael suspecting Zilla because every time um, Rael has a headache and has a flashback she sees Porter going up to talk to Scylla and Scylla's like kind of not really coming clean because she says did, well, did you see him that night and she would never say anything um, but after like the person covered for her, Scylla was able to you know confidently go back and say oh yeah he did come and he was trying to get back to, you know, together with me and whatever you know yada 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 I guess my problem with that is that Raelle is so trusting. Like, and, and to clear this up, Raelle actually asked the guy that she's hanging out with, the other queer basically at the party, um, he, she's like, have you ever been in love with someone and they did something horrible, you know, and it's unforgivable. And, you know, basically you, you want to believe the best in them, you want to stay with them, yada, yada. But Raelle says, in love. But when Scylla's talking, she says, I like you. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> huh. <laughs> I mean, Rael literally is like, no matter what happens, I'm with you. No matter what anyone says, whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah I am there. So Rael is definitely, yeah, Rael's definitely more committed to Scylla than Scylla, I think, is to Rael. But I think, I do think that Scylla likes Rael a lot. And it's getting her in trouble with her mission. Um, so yeah, that's, that's an interesting little side thing there, but yeah, all in all, I mean, it wasn't a bad episode. Um, another thing that kind of made me feel a little awkward was the scene where Alder is getting it on with the witch father and her, her biddies are like around, like holding their arms up. It's almost like they're sharing an orgasm and I'm like, that is a... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, that was a little weird. Um, but again, if you're going to look at it at a spiritual level, I guess, because they share her, you know, they all take years and war wounds from her. Why wouldn't they take pleasure too? So I kind of get the concept. It's just, wow, <laughs> that's, these women are never away from her. It's weird. <laughs> um, but how hot was Alder? Alder remind me of like Wonder Woman's cousin from Themyscira. She was hot. I literally thought she was an Amazon. She looked like Wonder Woman's cousin sister you know whatever so they definitely got somebody extremely you know attractive and charismatic to play alder which is why it's also harder for some people to think because i've been reading the boards and some people don't believe that alder is in on it with the spree or started the spree and i'm like well that's even better because that'll be the person that shocks you the most later when you find out at the end of the season that it is her if we even find out at the end of the series there's 10 episodes we may not even know that it's her like it could be season two before they reveal that because you know it sometimes it's you know a slow burn sometimes not so much so this isn't a CW show. <laughs> CW seems to reveal things in the next episode most of the time. Freeform kind of, you know, stretches it out a little bit. So we may not get who's the mastermind of the spree, but I still think it's Alder, and I think I think that Anacostia is in on it because, you know, of course, she's adopted by, you know, Anacost or Anacostia was adopted by Alder, and so that's kind of her mother figure. So, of course, you're going to do what Mommy says. So, I mean, it's just, I guess to me, it's just very... It's a very interesting circle and a very interesting conundrum because I don't know if the spree was founded to stay relevant or to actually free witches from slavery. Is this something Alder actually believes or is she trying to keep herself in power so that she doesn't lose everything? Because I think that is one of her biggest fears. From what I'm learning of her character, she seems to be the person that needs to be in charge. And it, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be possible, you know, because she's been in charge for hundreds of years. And if she dies, what happens to the Accords? Does the Accords die with her? Is that why she's immortal? She's terrified of what would happen if she's not around? I mean, there's just so many questions that I have about this world. And they are fleshing it out. It's just, it's just, 
you know, little pieces and you just kind of grab them and you're like, oh, they do that. And then something else will happen. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you know? and so it's very, it's very interesting, but I'm loving the show. I really am. I'm really looking forward to next week. Um, the only other thing that I like to point out, what well, kind of is Abigail. So Abigail, you know, besides her two boy toys that she had a threesome with, <laughs> I really see the pressure her mother puts on her. And there's a part of the episode where Tally's talking to her because she's seeing um, Garrett, the guy that she likes, the one that she, you know, wants to be with and actually loses her virginity to, is, is talking to other girls. And so Tally's like, has no experience with guys. So she goes to Abigail and she's talking and, you know, Abigail gives her a pep talk. And then, of course, Tally's like, easy for you to say, you know, you're always confident. And then, you know, Abigail basically for a second said not always or that you basically that that wasn't always the case and Tally's like I don't believe you and then Abby turns it like that and that's her personality you can see it when she has banters with Libba she can see it when she's talking to Rael but you really saw it when her mother was confronting her in the hallway and her mother was always like oh your team number or unit numbers aren't where I think they should be and yada yada she's like there's so much pressure from her mother to succeed that I think it's to the point where I don't know if Abigail really wants to be, you know, in the war college. And Libba even points that out, that she doesn't seem to be trying, you know. I think her mother really is putting so much pressure on her, she doesn't want to be her mother. And I think we're going to learn a lot of drama about that next week. Um, especially when she mentions about in the trailer, she says, this is my mother and all my dads. And I'm like, how many dads do you have? <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's interesting. Um, but the other thing about Raelle is her and, I'm sorry, Abigail, her and Raelle are having, um, it almost seems like every week they get a power up in their friendship or like they level up. So when some of the students were talking about Raelle and how she basically tried to say Porter and went out of bounds or whatever, Abigail like quickly defended Raelle. And I thought that was really interesting. And she even told Raelle, we were proud of you. And it just seems like their whole, especially since... Um, the last episode when they went into town together, when they went to um, Salem Town and they had pizza together, their relationship and their friendship has definitely 180'd since episode one. So I really want to see how close friends they can be by episode 10. Because I think they're all going to need, these three are going to need each other. And I, I really like them as units, as a unit. They are my favorite unit, like Anacostia, even though I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's very shady because Alder's keeping her eye on them and Spree want rail. And I'm just thinking that all of that's tied in together. It's very strange, but no, it is what it is. But yeah, very good episode. Really looking forward to episode five, but that is my opinion. I would love to know what you guys think. So please leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you would like to sign up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next on the nerd ballot, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.